Hey, I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. And I'm Bill from Punished Props. And we're going to show you how to finish PLA. This is our friend Bill from Punished Props. Howdy. He's what we would consider an expert in finishing 3D prints. So today he's going to kind of give us a walkthrough on what it takes to finish a 3D print. Yeah, so usually I use 3D printing for making high-end props. So. The texture on these guys here is something that I find less desirable. So this is how I like to remove that texture and prepare these pieces for painting. So let's start with some tools. Absolutely. These are some of my favorite tools, starting with some little hand tools. We have an X-Acto knife to carve away any little burrs or like protrusions. A lot of the work gets done with these little needle files, a lot of manual work here. You know if you use like a powered tool, mm -hmm. then it'll just melt it. So yes, find that out the hard way. Oh yeah. So we just use those needle files in a variety of shapes. And then I have a multi-tool here just in case I need a, there's a saw on here mm -hmm. in case you need a saw for some reason. And then to do a lot of the filling after we've sanded it, we've got a couple of things here that'll help us. The favorite is a filler primer. I got this one just at Home Depot. You can also find automotive filler primers at automotive stores. This is a high build primer, so it'll fill in any little imperfections. It's not gonna, fix big gouges or anything, but tiny little things like the layer lines, it'll help fill those in before the last time we paint it, mm -hmm. or the, I should say the last time we sand it, because we're going to sand it a couple times. We also have over here some spot putty. There are lots of different types. This is an air drying spot putty. For the bigger blemishes that may need to get filled in, like areas where support material has kind of gummed it up a little bit, you can use this, apply it, uh, and then let it dry and sand it down nice and smooth. So. Those are the tools that we have. We have sandpaper, we're ready to go. We'll show you guys how I finish some of these PLA parts. Let's get to it. So this part here, these are done with uh, PLA. This is, I believe, the Matter Hackers Pro PLA. And I believe this is the silver, I can't remember. That looks like Ultimaker Silver. It's Ultimaker Silver here. Um, and it's not quite, like it, it came out, it's a good print. Mm -hmm. But I want it to look really, really smooth, of course. So I'll start by looking over it, and if there are any blemishes that can be easily removed and safely removed with an X-Acto knife, I will try and trim those away. Anywhere that the uh, filament uh, starts and stops, there tends to be a little bit of a little bit of a blemish, and those can just be carved off carefully. I have put an X-Acto like, like this through my thumb before. I have a scar on my arm. There, there you go. Exacto knife. So carefully. And then I go to my needle files to start removing, uh, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a line here. This is where it started and stopped for each layer, and that's not perfectly round. So we can start with that and just kind of use the file to round that over a bit. You don't want to flatten it. You go around the curve to get rid of as much of that as possible. We will fill it in later. But as much of that work we can do now, it's going to help us a lot later. So that's what we do. We just go over everything that we can with the file and try and remove as many of those layer lines as we can. So we're going to do that for a while, and then we'll probably cut to when that's done. We've made some progress with our files, and now it's time to turn to sandpaper. At this point, 220 grit is just fine. Um, I like to finish up, if I can, with like a 400 grit, that's way down the line. But 220 is good, and this flexible stuff is actually quite nice. If I can trim off a couple pieces for us here, safely. Oh, wow. You have a sharp oh. knife. There we go. And, oops. You've got those little buttons there. Mm -hmm. You can start uh, sanding down a bit of the texture. Now on this piece here, uh, there's, it's kind of fuzzy still from the, all that file. The files are pretty aggressive, so this 220 will knock that back and leave a pretty nice finish on there. So I'm going to do that, but before I do, the inside of this actually has quite a lot of indents. This is where the support material was. So to smooth that out a bit, I'm going to first fill it with some of this spot putty. And this stuff is pretty noxious. We have a well-ventilated area, and I'm keeping it away from my face. And I'm just using this little wax chisel, and get a Harbor Freight here, to apply that and fill in those gaps the best that I can. And again, this is just an air drying putty. 
it doesn't have to look pretty. All I have to do is fill in those tiny gaps. So before you came in here, I had never seen this uh, this type of spot putty before. Before this, I had only used like Bondo glazing and spot putty. Yeah. Um, which I found worked for what I needed, but it was still not perfect. Um, so when did you kind of make the switch to uh, if you ever used? Um, I use I use the red. It's the red glazing and spot putty a lot. Um, this stuff someone uh, turned me on to recently. And I've tried it, and it's amazing. Um, it is more toxic, so just don't stand above this and work in a tiny apartment and huff it. It's not great, but there we go. So that'll be ready to sand in, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes. Um, there are any other little spots. There's an extra kind of like lip right there. I'm going to go over that as well in just a little bit. Remember, the, only put out as much as you need because you're going to have to sand this all off again later. So... I know when I was first getting started with 3D printing, I was trying to find what what settings did people use for um, printing props. And mm -hmm. Everybody has a different answer. Oh, yeah. Some people print them really fast so they have thick layers. Other people print them slow because they have really fine layers. Uh, what do you find works best for you? Um, the, I, Depending on the application. What I pick is, if I'm saying, usually I set up a print at night. and. I will tweak the layer height until the print will be done right when I wake up. So that's that's how I pick. <laughs> because the, the part of it too is I know that I'm going to do this kind of work later. And if I see something that isn't going to print perfectly, usually I'll do the analysis in my head and say, would I rather spend the time to tinker with the print and get it just right or just sand it later? And usually I just say, I'll just sand it later. There are some, this, this came out pretty great, but there are some spots I know I could have printed better, mm -hmm. but I'll just sand it later. We've made some progress. It's been about 10 minutes and this stuff is just about ready to sand. Uh, so it does dry super, super quick. It's probably those toxic chemicals in there that evaporate really fast. So more of our 220 grit, we can just go into these areas where we've added that green spot putty and just sand it smooth. And the spot putty is a lot easier to sand than the filament. I'm sanding basically back down to the layer lines and it's filled with just about everything else in. And you can do uh, several layers until you're happy with the finish on it. I think this part's hardly going to be seen. There will be a part in front of it, so I think that looks fine. Good and the first layer of paint will be this filler primer. This stuff is like automotive stuff. It's a high build primer and it's meant to fill in any of the remaining gaps that are still on our 3D printed piece. So what I'll usually do, especially if we have small parts, is I'll tape them down to a surface or hang them if I can and then spray them with this stuff. And one or two good layers should be just fine. We're in Southern California and it's sunny out so mm -hmm. it should dry really, really fast. And then we're going to sand it one more time. Now, is there a brand of filler primer that you like? You've tried some, found it doesn't work too well, Yeah. does that work better? This is what they had at Home Depot. It'll work just fine. I favor Duplicolor. You'll want to go to an automotive store to find that. Been another 10 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. This is two layers of filler primer on here. So at this point, one more round of sanding should do it. Uh, we have 220 grit. You can go with a 400 if you have it. That would be really good. Um, and basically, you're just trying to level off the filler primer with the layer line mm -hmm. so that you have a nice smooth surface. So, more sanding. More sanding, yeah. as always. I reckon that my prop making is about 90% sanding. And something else that's cool, you can get filler primer in a red uh, or this gray, and if your filament is an alternate color, which in this case it is not, you'll actually see the layer lines coming through as you sand it. So you can tell where you've sanded and where you haven't sanded. So you'd recommend filler primer to be the catch-all and then spot putty to be for the more glaring yeah. things. Yeah. And then, uh, then a lot of elbow grease. It's, it really is hard to get away with doing, not doing the sanding. Now people will say, but Bill, you could use, let's say it was ABS, or you can even acetone smooth PLA. It's possible. My beef with that is you'd lose fidelity. Mm -hmm. And with a space gun, something with really sharp details that I don't want to lose, I would rather have more fine control with the sandpapering to get exactly the finish that I want 
then kind of leave it to chance and let chemistry do all the work. So acetone is flammable. I have another tool. You have another tool. These are sanding twigs. It's think of it like a nail file, only very small for getting into tiny details. There we go. I spray painted this with just some basic spray paint, some metal metallic spray paint. Mm -hmm. Let it dry a little bit. It's dry to the touch. And that is what I would consider pretty good. Yeah. Again, you can spend as much time going over it as you want. On this particular piece, there are a couple of spots that I see there's still a bit of the line texture on there. Uh, you could go in and clean those up. But for a hand prop, that's not bad. Yeah. Finishing PLA prints is pretty straightforward, pretty easy. It's just probably the most time consuming part of any prop making project. Uh, Build is a lot of prop making prop. That's right, we're working on a whole bunch more 3D printing specific prop making stuff. We also have a ton of more traditional techniques like using EVA foam and molding and casting. So all of those tutorials are over on our channel at Punish Props. If you're new to our channel, what we have is we have, we have how-tos, we have reviews of new products and accessories and materials. And if that's just a little too much time to, to watch, we have the Matter Hackers Minute, where you, it's just one minute talking about recent 3D printing projects in the community. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers, joined by Bill from Punish Props. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. If you liked that, subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all the latest videos. And don't forget, go to matterhackers.com to shop for everything 3D printing.